So I'm George Taylor, based at Lowesdale in the southern Riverina. Um, and yeah, we're just broadacre cropping with some irrigation as well. I suppose it'd be two thirds dry land, one third irrigated. So yeah, mainly what we stick to is just canola and wheat uh, with some vetch hay as a opportune rotation crop. Um, and we're growing maize for silage, um, plus some grit, grit corn as well. Uh, yeah, well, we, we ended up going for the gold acres because um, just a good light machine for uh, this area. Like we're around that 21 inch rainfall and uh, you, you can have a lot of wet winters, obviously. It seems that this year might be one of those. It was in the back of my mind when I was looking for a self-propelled sprayer. And so far, so good. We've travelled across some country that we, we thought we'd make a fair old mess on. But um, it's been really, really surprising how it gets across the country and doesn't make a mess. I suppose the other thing is we, I just went for the G4 because of the 4,000 litre tank. The thing is, I suppose, when we've really got a lot on, we can you know, batch chemical up and take the water and the chemical to the spray to speed up that efficiency. But if we're at a quiet time, we can, you know, we're more than happy to come back to a central spot to fill up. Yeah, definitely had a look at a few of the um, other options out there, but um, I think the, the big thing that sort of swayed me is just this mechanical drive and the, the just the efficiency on the fuel use. I could just see over the life of the spray that I'd just have a lot more money in my pocket at the end of the day. And yeah, it's just, one of those good simple machines that you can run your eye across and understand how it all works just from the outside. You know, you don't have to be super duper mechanically minded to understand how the machine works. So it makes it you know, quite user friendly for the, you know, for farmers just to sort problems out themselves. Just a fairly stock standard machine, which is what I like to be honest. Um, that was the other good thing about the Gold Acres in my opinion. It's just got a nice tight little cabin it's not that spacious, but it's just really practical. And, you know, these days we're just smothered in technology and gizmo and gadgets. And I think we've got to the point now where sometimes it's good just to step back and say, do we really need to spend that extra money? And in my opinion, I didn't know to. What I wanted was a sprayer. And I think the only way to get the right tool for the job is with an SP. Um, I don't really need that versatile, you know, I don't need a tractor that has 10 different jobs and I'm back onto one thing. I just wanted a sprayer and that's all I wanted. So SP just seemed the best fit. And it just allows you to probably control your, your boom a little bit better being you know situated closer to the boom. So turning around, going around trees, you know, fitting into tight places, in the irrigation, etc. It's just a, a suited machine for the job, you know. Well, I suppose it's all dependent on hours um, that the machine will do per year. I'm hoping that this machine will allow to, me to get into any expansion in, in farm size. So um, at this point in time, I'd definitely see five years in the machine. But, you know, if we scale up going, for, going ahead, we'll look, it might be something that you have for three years and change it up and just keep that, you know, reliability and new technology in the mix. But at this point, I think it's probably a comfortable five-year machine. This comes back to once again trying to keep it simple. I'll run about 80, 80 litres to the hectare, which is a perfect 50 hectare tank. Just makes it easier for mixing, etc. Normally sitting on around that, you know, 21 or 2 k's an hour quick enough to get the area done and it's not too quick to you know be bouncing all over the paddock it's just seems like a good operating pace yeah with the SP market you've just got to be sort of looking at something that's not too heavy um, and, and something that if it you know has a major breakdown it's not going to cost you a quarter of the price of the machine or you know it's just the cost of running those things are higher and higher every day and I think yeah that and just the fact that it's just got to be something that you can sort of fix yourself and, and maintain yourself without too many complications. Well, the fuel's been really good. Like I'd say we're around that 11 to 12 litres to the hour, which is just remarkable in my opinion. Um, yeah, so even with, we've got the four wheel drive option and I haven't noticed whether we uh, have the four wheel drive in or out, whether we're, you know, chew, we're not chewing a, big different amount of fuel in that scenario either. To be honest, like when I first like had a look at a gold acres on the internet etc, I thought oh it'd have to be four wheel drive, you know, like just because I'd come from a, a John Deere that was four wheel drive and I'd had a front wheel assist tractor on the tow behind, 
So I thought those things are definitely got to be four wheel drive and then I realised that they weren't. So I suppose I just had this feeling in me that I had to have four wheel drive but it mightn't be 100% necessary but I think it'll be just in an irrigation scenario where you've got wet areas in pivots that you're trying to spray through inevitably with summer crop you just anything you've got to help you out through that wet spot is a good thing so i think in my scenario it'll totally justify itself yeah i took the uh, side by side through a, a swamp there the other day and uh thought geez this is bloody too wet in here but uh yeah when i got there in the spray i thought damn it i'll just give it a bloody go which i did and uh yeah we got through so like i feel quite confident i'm not uh sitting in the seat you know, sweating at, at wet spots, or just, yeah, just poke through them at the moment. But it could be a problem too, because we mightn't be able to get anything close to it when I do get it bogged. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the boom research just was one of the big uh, things that got it over the line, because, yeah, it just was so sick of getting down to the paddy and charging that boom up after giving it a flush at night and wasting all that chemical and also having these areas in your paddock where you've overdosed the ground and you've got those bare spots from, from charging that boom. And with the uh, pre you know, you load up and on the way to the paddock, you've just got it all circulating. You get to the paddock, fold out, hit the switch, and she's ready to go. And then in reverse, coming home, got the fresh going through, rinsing all your lines out, pump out the whole lot, straight in the shed. It's just, it's a, sort of a must, I think, going forward in, in all sprays.